Now, I'll introduce you to Socket Communications. First of all, let's have a look at the basic features of Socket Communication. A BSD Socket Interface is an API group to send and receive binary data through the TCP protocol. A collection is created using the IP address and the port number saved in the Net Endpoint class. In this socket, both synchronous communication and asynchronous communication are supported. Synchronous here means that the function does not return until a specified amount of data is received or sent during the data communication. If there's a problem with the data communication or if there's a delay, the program will not respond until the problem is resolved or the communication is complete. On the contrary, the asynchronous communication function is returned immediately, regardless of whether the data transfer is complete or not. In this case, the actual data transfer is handled using the socket listener. Let's have a look at the socket class in the OSP net sockets namespace in more detail. A socket connection of the socket class provided by Bada is either automatically created or manually created using the application. You can name a connection using the endpoint data, such as the IP address or port number. To receive or send data in synchronous communication mode, you can use the send or receive function. In asynchronous communication mode, you can receive or send data using the listener of the socket. The functions to read or write data when the connection status has been changed and to receive notifications when the connection is closed are implemented in the listener. Additionally, a connectionless transfer is also provided. Now, let's have a look at the procedures to create a synchronous socket client with connection-oriented communication mode. First, it's necessary to create and initialize the socket. You can create a connection-oriented function by setting the socket type of the construct function of the socket to stream. To set the socket mode to blocking mode, the LOCTL function is used. To connect the socket to the remote host, the connect function is used with the endpoint data structure containing the IP address and port number. To send and receive data, the send and receive functions are used. When the communication is complete, the socket is closed. I'll explain this in more detail, showing you some sample code. First, this is the procedure to create a socket. The socket is created using IP version 4 the stream type, and the TCP protocol. To use blocking mode, the socket is set to blocking mode using the LOCTL function. Then, the net endpoint class is created with the IP address and port number. Using the endpoint information, the socket is connected to the remote host. This is the procedure to actually send the data. The variables necessary to exchange data are declared here. Then, the while loop is prepared. The while loop is used if all the data cannot be sent at the same time. It sends the required amount of data by splitting the data into smaller sections and sending each part individually until all the data is sent. Then, the array pointer is passed using the send function of the socket class. The offset is set to send only the non-transmitted data in the array. The value after subtracting the previously transmitted length, m, from the total length is passed to indicate the remaining amount of data to be sent. Since the last parameter returns the number of bytes of data sent by this function, you can calculate the amount of data sent up until this point by adding this value to the previously transmitted length. And you can receive data in the same way. You can receive a specified amount of data at a particular location 
by calling the receive function repeatedly until all the data is received. In the last part of the code, you can see that the socket is closed and then deleted. Although asynchronous transfer using blocking mode is easier to implement and understand, the program does not respond while sending or receiving data. In some cases, if the transmission is slow, the program will seem to be unresponsive. If the remote host does not respond, the program can freeze. To resolve this problem, commercial applications use the non-blocking mode. In non-blocking mode, the send and receive functions are immediately returned and the actual transmission procedures are handled by the listener. Let's have a look at socket communication using this non-blocking mode in more detail. The procedures to create and construct a socket are the same as those for blocking mode. However, the code to set the blocking mode of the socket is not required, and a listener object is created and added, unlike for blocking mode. Then, the sample code shows the procedures to specify the cases for which the operation is to be asynchronously performed by using the listener object. Here, making a connection, writing, reading, and closing options are specified to be asynchronously performed using the listener object. Then, like in blocking mode, the endpoint information is created with the IP address and the port number, and then the connections established. This sample code shows the procedures to actually create a connection. The actual data communication is handled in the listener object. This code shows the procedures to declare the listener object. First, the class is created by inheriting the iSocketEventListener class. Within this class, the variables to save the amount of data to be sent, the amount of data sent, the amount of data to receive, as well as the amount of data received are declared. The actual data to be sent and received are declared in a character array. Then, to specify the current class state, the status variable is created. If the value of the state variable is zero, it indicates that the data is being transmitted. If the value is one, it indicates that the data is being received. And two indicates that the connection is closed. Therefore, because the connection is not established, the class is initialized starting from state 2. Then, the amount of data to be sent and received is specified. In the last section, the onSocketAccept function is called when the program performs the role of the server and wants to connect with the client. The onSocketConnected function is called when the connection is established. Here, the data is transmitted using the send function. The data is not actually sent at this point. The listener function will be called when the data is transmitted. The last part gets the amount of data sent and adds the value to the total amount of data sent. Finally, the class status is changed to sending. This is the onSocket ready to send function. This function is called when additional data can be sent because the send buffer is empty. Even if this function is called and the current state is not in the sending state, the function returns. The function attempts to send data from the data that has not yet been sent, like in blocking mode. When the required amount of data is sent, the function starts receiving data. The receive function calls the receive function of the socket to start receiving data and changes the state to the receiving state, which is 1. This is the onSocket ready to receive function that receives data. This function notifies the application that the receive buffer is filled with data and the data is ready. If the state is in the not receiving state, the function returns. This function contains the procedures to receive the data and to close the socket and change the status to 3 when all the data has been received. Finally, 
This is the on socket closed function that's called when the connection's closed. The reason for the connection being closed is passed through a parameter. Depending on this value, you can perform the relevant operation. BADA also provides a secure socket. A secure socket is a socket that uses the SSL protocol. The usage is the same as that of a socket. The secure socket works in non-blocking mode only and can be used for connection-oriented communication only. You can use a secure socket simply by specifying the socket protocol as SSL instead of TCP. However, server-side functions such as listening and accepting are not provided. Let's wrap up BADA's network features. First of all, the HTTP class makes implementing HTTP data communication easier. Wi-Fi operates in ad hoc mode or infrastructure mode. Ad hoc mode is generally used to briefly connect to a nearby host. Then, I explained socket communication as a low-level communication method. In BADA, sockets support both blocking mode and non-blocking mode. Connectionless sockets and secure sockets are also supported. Besides these items, a method to customize a connection is provided. For more information about customizing a connection, please refer to your reference manual.